Hi, this is my block by block tutorial for a lava powered 50 furnace super smelter. It's easier than it sounds, I promise. You're gonna need 44 buckets of lava and everything in this other chest to get started. The materials are in the description below and the quartz blocks can be replaced with any solid block. You'll also need to be able to make seven water sources. I'm gonna use the ice for mine. To get started, you're gonna place 10 cauldrons in a row, just like this. And on the 11th, we're gonna skip the block, turn the corner and make a square out of this, skipping all four corners. You should have one cauldron left. Decide which side of your farm is the front. I'm going to use the one with the chests and then place the last cauldron in the front right corner. Now we're going to place pistons facing clockwise into the farm just like this. That's two. We're going to do all four of these. Three and one more. There's the fourth and we're going to go behind that and to the right place an observer facing into the cauldron in front. And I'm going to go back and do that on all four corners as well. So that's two, three, and four. Behind the piston, we're going to put redstone dust, a solid block behind the observer, and a lever on the observer. And again, we're going to repeat this on all four corners. So it's dust, then it's solid block, and then it's a lever on the observer. Third one is dust, solid block, lever on the observer, and one more time, dust, solid block, and a lever on the observer. Once all four are done, go back to the one on the front right and flip the lever twice quickly. That should start the pistons moving around and the feed tape should look like this. And once that's working, you can turn the farm off for now by going to the front left corner, flip the lever to extend the piston, and then just push it back to reset. Okay, starting from anywhere that isn't directly over a corner piece, build up two blocks on the top of a cauldron, and then two on the side of that starting from the upper block, and two on the other side as well. And you're gonna extend this lower line and these two, all the way around the farm. I'm going to do the lower one first and just go all the way around. You're going to cover the corners as well when you do this. You'll end up with a full square like that and then just bring those two upper layers around as well. Complete the square and it should look like that. Drop inside the farm, break this temporary block, that one, break a cauldron so you can get out, break that temporary block and then replace the cauldron like that. Go around to the right side of the farm. You can see the front there. This is the right here. So place a temporary block on every block. Plus you'll place one hanging over the edge. There should be 15 total temporary blocks here. And you're gonna place a furnace on each one of those. So then you'll have 15 furnaces put into the farm. When you're done with that, go to the end of the line, add a block here and a block here. Now you're gonna add 14 more temporary blocks right up against the back edge of this farm. It should take you to the other corner. Then you're gonna add furnaces to these as well. When you get to the other end, you're gonna add two temporary blocks onto this side like this and then a temporary block up against the edge of the farm all the way over just like this and extend by one on the end. Once again, you're gonna add furnaces to all of these. It should be 15 furnaces. You're gonna be left with five. You're gonna place one block off the edge like this, another here, and then five more blocks, one, two, three, four, and five, and then place your remaining furnaces against those. Now you're gonna remove all the temporary blocks, which will be the ones up against the back side of any furnace. Leave the corner blocks. You're gonna do this all the way around. With 50 total furnaces, this super smelter has quite a few and it'll work for just about everyone. Once those blocks are removed, shift click a hopper facing into the back of every furnace all the way around. The lava farm that powers this is the Shulkercraft design, but the rest of the smelter, refueler, minecart stations, and the bucket system is all my own creation. I'd love it if you'd leave a like, comment, or even subscribe to see more of what I do. I'll be building this in my own hardcore world soon. Okay, we're back to the start of the furnace ray where we began. Place a block under the first furnace and four coming off of that. Then a double chest, another below that, and a third against the ground like this, and point some hoppers into the back of those. Remove these temporary blocks now and you can shift click a hopper into the previous hopper just like this, all the way around the farm. What you don't want to do is put a hopper up against the underside of the furnace like this. If the point is facing down, you've done it wrong, so you'll need to remove that one and shift click it into the next one. The benefit of using my smelter design is you can run it without coal, and if you play in a world where carpet duping isn't allowed, it's the least laggy way of getting infinite fuel. Big enough bamboo farms and kelp farms to run 50 smelters are pretty rough on lag. Okay, we're gonna add dripstone to the underside of the lava channel. I would no longer recommend placing them on the blocks the observer's facing, but we'll fix that later in my design. Now let's build the bucket refueling station. That's gonna be redstone next to the corner cauldron, a dropper next to that. We'll need to knock out these blocks here, and this one. Now just shift click a hopper like that. I'm gonna quickly fix up the aesthetics of this section. It's unnecessary, but I don't wanna replace them later to make it look good. You will need a slab here, here, and if I replace this block and fix this up really quickly, you'll also want a slab there. Add a double chest like this, a hopper pointing into it, a comparator facing away from that hopper, three hoppers into the back of the dropper, then three solid blocks. 
a comparator facing away from this, and three redstone dust there. You're gonna then dig out these three blocks, and then underneath those three solid blocks, the first and the third, point a repeater into the middle block, and put a redstone torch on the back of it. Then fill all that back in. Click a hopper into the back of the comparator like this, and then on that same hopper, fill it with 20 filler items. These can be named blocks or anything you won't put in the system. Then put a stack of buckets in the first slot. You should see that number drop until it hits six. And then you can go check the dropper and that should have nine. Now I'm gonna dig this area out. I'm gonna show you the area that I'll dig. Yours can be much smaller once you know where the pieces go, but I'm gonna build mine how I would like it in game for myself. I'm also gonna dig one layer below so I can fill in the quartz and make it look nicer. Once it's all filled in, it's harder to change. So I just wanna do all this now. Again, this is a totally optional step. The next step that matters is where you're gonna place the next dropper. I'll make this lower area 10 by five, but as you can see, most of the front is just an entry. It's not really part of the farm. Let me finish this part real quick. This is how mine's gonna look. I chose quartz so the redstone would show up pretty well. Okay, from this hopper count one, two, three, and then on one out, place a dropper facing down, soul sand on that. You're gonna put a hopper going into the back of that dropper. Jump over here and place two more hoppers there and there to connect the whole system. A comparator going out from the dropper, there must be something in there. And you can put that into a solid block, a repeater coming out from the solid block, and a repeater going back into the dropper. Then redstone dust to connect all of that, and it should look like this. To test this, add a couple of items to the dropper. They should get spit out immediately. You'll see these come out the sides. So we're going to add glass or a solid block to the sides of the soul sand, like this. Continue building that tube all the way up until it's at least too high, and you'll be able to test it again. Let's add more blocks now and see where that goes. That goes into the tube, that's perfect. Now we're gonna continue the tube three more high here, two in the back until it touches the farm, and then three on these two sides as well until it's all even. We're gonna add a solid block here, another one here, and one right there. These are just placeholders for now, we'll fix this later, but we're gonna continue the tube until it's too high above the farm. We're gonna build the rail system for both items and fuel now. You'll start by adding a hopper to the top of every furnace on the smelter all the way around. One tip you'll notice is I'm gonna crouch and walk on the edge of the hoppers. This is because if you walk over the center while you're placing these, you'll get this up and down bobbing that's really annoying and it makes it more difficult to place the next hopper. So just move back to the edge like this and you can pretty smoothly finish that up. Once that's done, we're gonna fix the end of the line here now that we know exactly where this will be. Let's take these out. You're gonna put glass there or whatever block you like, but the solid block needs to go here and then actually there so the rail will stop. Now you can just add your powered rails all the way around. You're gonna fill in these corners with two more solid blocks and then just put a regular rail on each of the corners and continue that on both tracks, both the upper and the lower. You can see how that should look here. To power the rails, you're gonna grab your four redstone blocks and add one to the center of each side, just above the lower rail, beside the upper rail. One redstone block will actually power all the rails, so check that you've done it right. Then you're gonna go this way and do the same thing. Then we'll move to the third side and do the exact same thing. Obviously on the front, it's only a five block long track, so you can put it wherever you'd like. Next, we're gonna extend the water vader tube. We're gonna go out four from the upper block here for a total of five. Let's go back and check that. One, two, three, four, and five. We're gonna add two temporary blocks onto the end of that. Then we're gonna add a double chest starting from that block and extending out away from the farm. Then we're gonna add a solid block next to this hopper and one under the chest and then finish the rail there. Break the two temporary blocks and get yourself back up on top of the farm. Shift click a hopper into the double chest here and then another into that, just like that. Jump on the chest like this here. We're gonna finish this water tube. Just bring this up, one more here, here, and here, and then these sides can come down toward that double chest. When you get to the end, you're just gonna place one over the chest as well, and this does have to be glass. Then you can add a temporary block here and start the roof of glass over the top of this. I'm just gonna bring this all the way back and leave one opening so we can get down into the tube. Now you need to hop down into the tube and create seven water source blocks. You can do this however you like, but I'm gonna use ice because breaking that's easy and then it creates a source block in each spot. But you can use seven buckets or kelp if you prefer here, whatever's easiest. When it's done right, the system should shoot you completely out of the farm like this. And then you can just add the glass over the top there and you're done with that section. To test this part of the system, you're just gonna add a few items to the dropper. You should see them go up the water elevator over and into this chest up here, and then we can just go up here and check. And there they are. We need to build the minecart loading stations now, so start by building a staircase along these chests. Then we're gonna build a small platform, just connect these blocks back here and the furnaces and all of this together. And then you're gonna go over to where the lava will start, so right there, and build this out like that. This first row should be on the same one as the lava, and then you're gonna go out one to the other side. 
making this platform four by six total, just like that. Then I would double this staircase just so it's easy to get up and down. Then back on the platform, we're gonna build four here and another four in front of that, and then two on top and two on top, just like that. So if I come back down here, there's four and then two on this side. And then if I go around, there's four and two on this side as well. In the back, we're gonna add two more here and continue the rail all the way down. The last rail should be unpowered. If it's not, you'll need to move your redstone block down one. Okay, put a hopper into the unpowered rail and then a hopper into the hopper and a double chest on top of that, just like that. Back here, you're gonna put two and the third block right there. Okay, I should have brought this up one more layer, but stay with me. We're gonna put a solid block in the back corner, redstone dust there, and a comparator facing into the block. I will come down now and show you it should be up one more layer, so it's comparator here, redstone dust there, and a solid block. Coming back around, you're gonna put a comparator coming out from the hopper, a repeater going into the block, and two redstone dust. And then on this side, you're gonna put a dropper, and then we're gonna go around and shift click a hopper into that and put one item inside. Behind this chest, put a lever. If you need to turn this on manually, you can just flip this lever right here and it will turn the rail on. The other lever we're gonna put is behind this chest on the bottom part. Just open this space behind the chest, put a lever in there. When you flip that, this becomes a lava farm instead of a smelter. Add a hopper minecart to both rails, then grab your lava and you can start carefully placing one bucket in each block of the lava channel. Lava shouldn't flow anywhere when you're done, so each block must be a source for this to function. When you're done, you're gonna add empty buckets to this dropper. You're gonna need a lot of buckets to start this entire farm the first time. You'll need about 300 total, so just fill it all up. Here's a quick spin around the entire farm, and this is how it looks. And then here's how the lower section looks. You can get a closer look at how everything is at the moment. To run the farm, you're gonna fill your inventory with anything but buckets. Keep one stack of buckets in your hotbar. You're gonna stand behind this hopper and turn the piston feed tape on. Now just hold right click while you aim at the cauldron in front of you. When a full cauldron passes, you'll collect it, but because your inventory is full, it'll fall into the hopper, up the water vader, and into the fuel chest. The minecart will then pick it up and drop it into the next furnace that needs fuel. And because we have 50 furnaces with hoppers going into each, you will need quite a few lava buckets to fill up and get started. Put your items to smelt in the upper chest. It'll fill the hopper minecart below, and when the hopper itself gets to 24 items, it'll send the cart on its way with this redstone system here. You can see the cart is full, and once the hopper goes over 24, it takes off. The hopper continues to fill while it's gone, so when the cart comes back, it loads up extremely quickly. It's a double speed system anyway, so it'll fill up pretty quick overall. And once it reaches 24 again, you'll see it'll light up the comparator, the redstone next to us, and it'll send the cart back out again. Once it's full, the system keeps up pretty well. You can see that five out of six rows of sand have gone in, and we have almost four full rows of glass back already. We're working at the max speed of hoppers, unfortunately, so they do back up over time. You'll see a lot more is smelted already and ready to be collected. You can also start to see buckets in the system. These will pass through our filter, go back into the dropper, and it'll feed more buckets to us. Now for a couple of bits of advanced troubleshooting and fixes. First thing is you wanna remove the dripstone over the cauldron the observer faces into on all four sides. Unfortunately, the lava sometimes fills the cauldron when you don't want it to. That can fire the observer, extend the piston, and break the farm. Now let's talk about this etho clock. Is it necessary? No, not if you're using the farm manually. If you want to AFK for a couple hours, it might be. I've added a dropper facing into the player, who's standing on a hopper that feeds into another double chest. You also want a hopper with a chest on top of this one. So the problem we're solving is this. Sometimes you collect two buckets in a row, and the refilling station doesn't do its job, and it only gives you one back. Over time, your stack of 16 becomes a stack of one, and you just keep picking up and putting back the lava. This is very bad. See, I've gone from 16 buckets to 11 pretty quickly. Essentially, I'm just giving us an extra bucket if we need one. Every so often, based on how many items you throw in the hopper clock, the system will spit an extra bucket out to you. If you don't need it, it simply goes into the hopper you're standing on, goes through this hopper, and back into this double chest. You can use that to refill the system. If you do need it, you'll pick up the bucket and have an extra one so you don't run out. The etho clock is a timed release for this dropper, allowing it to only run every so often. It's not a perfect fix. When the redstone block gets moved, it powers the dropper, then it gets moved back. The clock itself is simple. It's a hopper facing another hopper with comparator coming out of those, a solid block, redstone, and sticky pistons. You can see it all right there. Then there's just one redstone block between the two sticky pistons. You can control how long each of the cycles last by how much you put into one of the hoppers. It passes to the other hopper and then fires off. You can see there's six buckets in here at the moment. We'll wait for the clock to flip, and then it'll fire. And there it goes, now there's seven. If you're gonna smelt more than three double chests at once, you'll need to expand the storage. My plan is to go off to the side something like this, 
put some extra chests in here, break all these temporary blocks, then stick hoppers into that, and run the hopper line back into the main system. With that all connected, you'll have a ton more storage, something like this. Then you can go up here and put a hopper into the back of this chest, add a double chest on top of that hopper, and then add another hopper behind that chest, and add another double chest, and you can just keep repeating this until you've got enough storage up top. Finally, I'd probably put a piece of carpet over this hopper in the player area so you don't walk into the hopper and do that up and down thing we were talking about earlier. Here's one more look at all the new redstone I've added. You can see the entire etho clock. And that is my 50 furnace lava powered automatically refilling super smelter and lava farm. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!